I greet you in Jesus' precious name. Well, today I've got my cup as well. And I just want to share something very personal and very sensitive to my own heart. And that is sometimes we wonder, why is it that the unrighteous seem to do so well? Well, Jeremiah felt the same. And I'll let you read this later after the program in your own Bible. Jeremiah chapter 12 and verses 1 to 4. Jeremiah says to God, why is it that the unrighteous seem to prosper? And they seem to be so happy. And we who are walking with you, we seem to be losing out. <laughs> Let's just go to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13. And I'm going to read from verse 24 in my agricultural manual. Another parable Jesus put forth to them saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares, those are weeds, tares among the wheat and went on his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. The weeds also came up together. And so the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? Verse 28. And he said to them, An enemy has done this. The servants said to him, Do you want us then to go into the field and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at that time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares, the weeds, bind them up in bundles to burn them, and then gather the wheat into my barn. I want to say to you, Jesus is the ultimate authority. He says, leave them until the harvest. Folks, some people still need to repent. They need an opportunity to make right. God has given us all, me included, a chance to rectify our lives. Now, maybe somebody sitting there saying, but I'm saved by grace, not by good works. Of course you are. So am I. The Lord says, you show me your fruit, and I'll tell you whether it's good fruit or bad fruit. You see, there's an old saying, you can fool most of the people most of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time, and you'll never fool God. Never. So that unrighteous person in your life that's come in and maybe trashed your family, taken advantage of you, and you're saying he's walking free or she's walking free. No, they're not. See, God sees everything. God's the ultimate judge. And unless those people genuinely repent from their hearts, not just repent to save their souls, but to repent because they are truly sorry, they will be judged. And we know what happens then. The sheep and the goats. You actually need to pray for them. You say, I can't even forgive them, Angus. How can I pray for them? You must, so that they'll repent before they are judged. Don't walk around bitter and twisted, wasting your life, having attitudes towards a person who's not even aware of it, and they're having a wonderful life, and you are destroying your life. Give it to God, and then move on with your own life. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you'll be with my dear friend, that they'll have the strength, the power from God to forgive that person and move on with their lives and let you be the ultimate judge. Amen. May God bless you until next time. Goodbye.